We discuss how Bib Fortuna survived the explosion of Jabba's sail barge and managed to secure the Crime Lord's throne on today's Star Wars video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. So, when I saw the post credit scene for The Mandalorian 2 season finale, the main question in my head was, what is the Book of Boba Fett? Is that going to be a replacement for The Mandalorian Season 3? Is it a brand new show? And the answer to that seems to be, well, somewhere in between. But it seems like the question a lot of other people had is, how did Bib Fortuna survive the explosion on Jabba's sail barge? And yeah, I didn't even think about that, but you can see Bib Fortuna on Jabba's barge before it explodes. Obviously, there's no not a whole lot around the Great Pit of Carcoon, which is in the middle of the Dune Sea. But nonetheless, clearly Bib Fortuna survived and managed to secure the throne of Jabba the Hutt and the reins of his criminal empire. How did that happen? Well, right now all we can do is guess, but a lot of what we've seen so far about Bib Fortuna indicates that his Star Wars canon story may be very familiar, if not the exact same, to what happened in Star Wars Legends. So we're going to speculate based on on that legends information and i think the best way to do that is actually examine the source of fortuna's post return of the jedi lore and that comes from the short story of the day's annoyances bib fortuna's tale which comes itself from the excellent legends anthology book tales from jabba's palace which i've talked about many times on the channel in the past i say post return of the jedi lore but really we only get a few hours maybe up to a day of bib fortuna's life from the last time we see him most of the short story is based around the days and months leading up to the events of episode 6. I'll explain all of that in a moment, but the short version is that Bib Fortuna escaped Jabba's sail barge through the use of a secret private skiff which he had on board because he was planning to overthrow the crime lord anyway. And again, keeping it short, that's pretty simple, and that's what I expect Star Wars canon to use for its explanation as well. I mean, Bib Fortuna is portrayed as sort of conniving, and the fact that he manages right away to secure this power vacuum I think speaks to how motivated and sneaky and driven he is. And I mean, a life around Jabba and the people that he spends his time with will do that to you. But let's talk about the long story from the aforementioned Bib Fortuna legend short story because I think it's quite interesting. So Bib Fortuna had been planning the murder of Jabba for some time and as his major domo, he'd been making moves behind the scene to secure a clean transition of power. He had been getting access to Jabba's bank accounts, working with Jabba's connections within and without the palace, identifying risks to Jabba and to Jabba's palace, risks that he would have to deal with when he took the throne, and perhaps most interestingly, working with the Bomar monks. The Bomar monks were the beings who originally created Jabba's palace. The order is most well known for the ultimate stage of enlightenment for individual monks, where their brains are taken out, put into a nutrient vat, and carried around on spiders. That way they can, according to the short story, contemplate the mysteries of the universe without the distractions of the physical world. So you're literally a brain in a vat. Usually you don't even have external stimuli, although you can turn that on through the droid and you're just thinking there. Often brains would go insane if they weren't prepared, which is why this only happened after monks had achieved some stage of enlightenment. Anyway, Bib Fortuna is cruel like Jabba and he intends to maintain much of Jabba's criminal enterprise, even the seedy bits like selling slaves, but he honestly thinks he can do so more intelligently. He thinks Jabba's laxed in many concerns, and that his empire has started to fall into a bit of disrepute, which is interesting if for a reason I'll talk about later. Anyway, Bib planned a violent coup against Jabba. There were several different ways which he could have killed him, and the idea was he'd kill him, he'd immediately seize Jabba's bank accounts and his assets, and the Bomar monks would help to secure the palace itself. As Bib Fortuna worked with the monks, he also had this feeling that he was gaining some form of enlightenment, that he was beginning to see sort of the current of the universe and that he could predict things, almost like a force power. Although, as we learn at the end of the story, he really only
only had a very small taste of that, and in reality it was more of an illusion than anything else. Bib had ambitions beyond Jabba's palace though, I think his ultimate goal was to secure control of Ryloth, the planet of the Twi'leks, and there's a whole subplot about that in the story, but not really relevant for the purposes of today's video. Anyway, in the days leading up to Return of the Jedi, Bib is contacted by Luke Skywalker, who asks to let Han Solo free. This is not the scene in Jabba's palace, this is before in Mos Eisley, Bib says no. But he also recognizes that the Rebellion has their eyes on Jabba now, and has integrated members of the Alliance into Jabba's cadre. Not only Leia, who is, well, obviously Leia, but he also also knows Lando's there, he also knows R2-D2's there, he's not familiar however with C-3PO. Another interesting development is the fact that Bib Fortuna actually takes the thermal detonator that Leia has when she threatens Jabba under disguise, and he uses that as the building blocks for the plan which would see Jabba's death finally happen. His timeline is pushed forward by his embarrassment by Luke Skywalker, who of course uses a mind trick on him. He realizes that Jabba can't be allowed to live anymore and he can't suffer this humiliation as a major domo if he does want to secure power later. But at this point there are also multiple other plans underway to kill Jabba. There is poisoned food which Jabba actually does eat on the day of the sail barge. Apparently half the drinks being served by R2 were poisoned and of course there was the whole rebel situation sort of culminating in the fact that Jabba was definitely not making it off that sail barge regardless of how things went down with the pit of Carcoon. And that is why Bib Fortuna brought his skiff. The sail barge events had the effect of not only taking Jabba away from the palace, but also leaving the palace fairly empty. So Fortuna's plan was just to sneak away, get back to the palace with Jabba now either dead or dying, and with the help of the Bomar monks, secure power. Exactly how this happened in Star Wars canon, we don't know, but presumably something like this. Either way, what happened in Legends is that Bib Fortuna got away, he got back to the palace, and was betrayed by the Bomar monks who, instead of helping him secure the palace and start the reign of his new empire, instead removed his brain and placed it in a new droid body. The short story actually ends shortly before that point, with Fortuna deciding not to kill himself and instead move on to this next phase of his life. But I do think it's interesting, because instead in canon we get a successful coup, and I do believe this was a coup, because I don't think there's any other way that Bib Fortuna of all people, the relatively quiet and all those scheming, inconsequential servant of Jabba could have secured power. He definitely had connections. He was probably working towards this himself, but we see by the time of the Mandalorian that he's fallen into the same excesses that Jabba has. His palace isn't well protected. Boba Fett kind of just strolls in and with the help of Fennec Shand secures that bag. He's also literally become fat and vulnerable like Jabba, so interesting how in canon, although the Legends character had all of these ideas, those certainly haven't played out. But guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this sort of shorter look at the history of Bib Fortuna, a character with a very fun Star Wars legend story. Again, I highly recommend, if you like the sounds of the story I told today, that you pick up the Tales from Jabba's Palace book. I love Tatooine as a setting. I love all the characters of Jabba's Palace. So for me, it's a book worth reading. Until next time though, guys, have a good one. Be safe and may the Force be with you.